2 Kings 25, the end of the book. And it didn't get better. They don't live happily ever after. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, we're talking about Zedekiah, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, nine years into the reign of uh, was it Zedekiah, tenth month and the tenth day begins this siege. Is that whoopee do? Is that, hey, mark it on your calendar? And yet God does not give us the month, the day, and the year that Jesus Christ was born, but he tells us about the captivity of Judah. So the birthday and birthdays are not to be acknowledged. God gives dates, he gives days, he gives years, he gives months. That Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to start seeing his name now, king of Babylon came. He and all his hopes against Jerusalem and pitched against it and they built forts that's the first time that word shows up forts against it round about now where they're not attacking the city right now what they're doing is they're building all the way around Jerusalem Jerusalem's a big place they're not allowing anything in and they're not allowing anything out they're going to cause a famine they're going to call a siege in the city that Whatever food's in the city, that's it. That's all you're going to have. You can't order. Uh, I know they didn't have uh, trailer trucks and all that. But you're not going to order in from the warehouses. No one's coming in. And the city was besieged unto the 11th year of King Zedekiah. So it's 9, 10, 11, three years. No food coming in. Now, they had a great store three years. The famine that was in Joseph's time in, in uh, Egypt was seven years long, and that down while almost wiped out Egypt. It wasn't for the seven plenty years that they were forewarned. I mean, you can't eat money. Some people say that the next depression in America is going to be, there's going to be no food. Try to eat your money. It's going to happen because God done it to his people, Judah. And if God's done it to the sinners of Judah, who are of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but loved of God, what's he going to do to a bunch of dogs? Well, you know, heathen. And the city was besieged in the 11th year of King Zedekiah. Learn from your Bible. On the ninth day of the fourth month, there's the date, the famine pre prevailed, and this will be the the ninth, the 11th year of Zedekiah, 4, 9, 11 of Zedekiah, prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. Bread's gone. Jeremiah 37, 21. Jeremiah 37. We're going to look at a couple scriptures as we study this chapter. A little parallel with Jeremiah. Jeremiah 37, verse 21. No bread, no food. Give ourselves a little dating here. I mean, time. Jeremiah 37, 21. And Zedekiah, there he is, the king, commanded that they should commit Jeremiah, the prophet, into the court of the prison that they should give him daily a piece of bread out of the baker street until all the bread in the city was spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. So Jeremiah is locked up when the Babylonians are around the city. And the king says, until the king knows until that bread is gone. Chapter 38, verse 9. Chapter 38, verse 9. My lord, the king, these men had done evil in all that they've done to Jeremiah, the prophet, whom they had cast into the dungeon. He is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. There it. 
Jeremiah backs up 2 Kings. 2 Kings, the writer, backs up Jeremiah. We are in the siege. Jeremiah is in the siege. Jeremiah, a man of God who has been listening to God, who has been doing what God has told him to do, has been saying what God has told him to say, he is suffering just as much with the evil, wicked sinners. Paul did not have luxury liner crews when he went to Rome. He was on a uh, he was on a slave ship of prisoners who whatever boat would take the money to transport the prisoners. The city was broken up, and that would mean not that they just broken the city. The families are broken. Everybody's just broken. It they're they're eating each other. They're going back into Samaria. They're boiling their babies. Starvation. And all the men of war, the army, fled by night, by the way, of the gate between two walls. Ezekiel 12, 6. Let's see the prophecy. I spoke about prophecy last night of Ezekiel. My God's a God of prophecy. What God tells his men to say, and some women, that's going to happen, it's going to happen. Ezekiel 12, 6. Now, Ezekiel, is a, he's a prophet post exilic. He's, most of the time, he's already in Babylon. And chapter 12, verse 7. And I did so as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day as stuff for captivity. Pack, pack up what you can before you leave. And in the evening, night, I dig to the wall of my hand, and I brought it forth in the twilight, and I bared it upon my shoulders in their sight. In the morning came the word of the Lord to me, saying, Son of man, hast, thou, <clears throat> hast not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said thee, What doest thou? Say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord, The burden concerning the prince of Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel that are among them. Say, I am your sign, like as I have done. Pack up what little you could. They shall remove and go into captivity. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry thereby. He shall cover his face that he see not the ground with his eyes. So come back over here. Second Kings 25 verse 4. Here they are. They're leaving in the middle of the night. They can't see and they can only grab what they have or are able to grab and carry. What Jeremiah said, the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were against the city round about, and the king went the way toward the plain. And some say that this is by the gate, uh, by the pool Salam. You find, now this is only questionable, Nehemiah 3.15, if you want to write that down. This area could be Nehemiah 3.15. That's what some scholars say. And it's a pool of Salom. And the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, Ezekiel 12, 6 and 7, 8, and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. He's going northeast. They're heading to the Jordan River to cross it. And all the army were scattered from them. I mean, you picture the way the President of the United States and the Secret Service. Here's the President running, and the Secret Service are anywhere but where the President is. That's what's going on. It's every man for himself. And they slew, oh, wait a minute, verse 6. So they took the king and brought him up to King Babylon and Ribla, and they gave judgment upon him. <laughs> Here's a court for Zedekiah. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. When Zedekiah's sons are, are, are slain, he's watching. And put out the eyes of Zedekiah. The last thing Zedekiah sees is he sees his sons being killed by the Babylonian army. And then he no longer sees, he's blinded, his eyeballs are taken out. That's cruel. And bound him with fetters of brass, handcuffs, chain cuffs, I mean, handcuffs and, and leg cuffs, 
and carried him to Babylon. He never sees anything else. And in the fifth month, here's another date, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, now we're going to start dating by King Nebuchadnezzar, of Babylon, came ne Nebuzar Aden, captain of the guard. Jeremiah 39, 9. Jeremiah 39, 9. And we can look at, we'll start in verse 6. Jeremiah 39, verse 6. King of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah and Riblah before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. All the good people that Zedekiah knew. More, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzedan, there he is, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon, the raiment of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, that fell to him, with the rest of the people that remained. But Nebuzedan, the captain of the guard, left the poor of the people, we're going to read that in a moment, which had nothing. So here, here we go, Jeremiah is backing up where we've been reading. Jeremiah takes part in the captivity and the destruction of Jerusalem. In 2 Kings 25, verse 5. I uh, know, verse, where, where is it? Verse 8. In the fifth month, of the seventh day of the month, that is the seventh of the 19th year, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came ne Neber Zedan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. He burnt the house of the Lord. There's the temple. Destroyed. When we get to Ezra and Nehemiah, it's just red mist. It's just, uh, Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah says, man, the walls are just garbage heaps. Anything that is wood has been burned. Anything that's been stoned has been broken up. It's been piled up. Anything that's gold, silver, brass has been taken to Babylon. And the king's house, the palace is gone. And all the houses of Jerusalem. I'm on that king's house that's through to David's house. Or did they build others? Was that David's house? I, I I can't, I don't know. But it would say that David, when he looked out, he could see where the, where the tabernacle was before the temple was built. And the great men's house burnt he with fire. So anything that was wood, he burns. And he makes sure it gets burned. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Just utter destroyed. And if you want to, advance yourself to Nehemiah and just read Nehemiah about it. Now, the rest of the people that were left in the city, those that weren't nobles, those that weren't royalty, those that were not military, those of no importance, that were left in the city, the, the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon, with the remnant of the multitude did Nebur and Dan, the captain of the guard, carry away. So he's taking people to Babylon, and he's leaving people in Jerusalem. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers. That's the first time that word shows up. And husbandmen. That's the first time that shows up. Well, look at that. The city, the walls, the buildings are all been destroyed. But not the plants, not the, I'm going to say nursery. When I mean by nursery, I don't mean glass. I mean everywhere the vine dressers, great, great yards. Husbandmen. Any kind of plants that would be suitable for vegetation. Mm -hmm. To feed the animals and everything. Fruits, vegetables. They kept those. And the law prescribed the Jew that when he was to go into a battle, he was not to kill the fruit trees. But any tree that was not good for food, you could destroy and use for bunkers and barricades. All right, verse 13 on. Verse 13 to 21 is very important. No, oh, important. Of all the information that God wanted us to know about Jesus Christ and his lowly birth, 
of which very little we're, we're told about. The pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord. Pillars of brass, important. And the bases. And the brazen seed, that's where the priest would wash. That's the laver. That was between the, the brazen altar and, the, and the, the holy place. That was in the house of the Lord. Did the Chaldeans break in pieces? Too big to carry. And carry the brass of them to Babylon. So Ezra would have to rebuild the brazen sea. That was broken. And the pots and the shovels and the snuffers. He said, well, we just read that. No. And the spoons and all the vessels of brass. That were items not in the temple. Those were the items of the brazen altar. Everything that was brass was that brazen altar. Now we're, at, we're, we're outside. We're in the courtyard. Wherewith they ministered, took they away. So all the instruments of that brazen altar in the, in the captivity, the second captivity of Babylon coming and destroying Jerusalem, they go into Babylon. They'll be ready for Ezra and Nehemiah. The fire pans, that's what the brazen altar needed, and the bowls, and such things as were of gold and gold and silver and silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars and C, and excuse me, two pillars and one C, and the bases which Solomon had made, and that would be, remember there were, four, there were 12 lines, four this way, four or three that way, north, east, west, and south, that's it. And then the laborers to wash, that's it. That's what Solomon built. For the house of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. We couldn't weigh it. That's why they broke it in pieces, too heavy. The height of the one pillar was 18 cubits. The chapter upon it was brass. And the height of the chapter, three cubits. And the wreath and work and the pomegranates upon the chapter round of all brass. Like unto these had the second pillar with the reason work. Now we're done. Look what God told us about the, about the tabernacle, the courtyard, and yet he didn't tell us all the, all the people that were there when he was born. We're missing something. Hollywood's going to go try to find what we're missing. Let's go find it, shall we? Revelation eleven nineteen. With all the pillars and the size of the pillars and the pomegranates on the pillars, you would think God would not have forgotten this. Revelation 11, did I say? 11, 11, 19. You would think, oh, it's missing. And the mercy seat disappeared when this was put into the house of Dagon. That the people that put it on the cart were able to look in it, and the Lord struck them dead. Now, Revelation 11, verse 19, in the temple of God. Sound familiar? There was a temple on the earth, and there's a temple in God. In heaven, God said to Moses, the pattern that... I think Moses went to heaven and saw everything in heaven like John did. And that temple that Moses built, why study it? Because that's exactly what you're going to see in heaven. The temple of God was open in heaven. And guess who would be sitting on that mercy seat? God. And where would Jesus be at the right hand at mercy seat? And what's next to God and Jesus? Two cherubim at least, and we read that there are four of them. Almost like two of those cherubim never leave God and Jesus' side. The temple of God was open in heaven. There was seen in the temple, there it is, the ark of his testimony. Testament, excuse me. The ark of his testament. There is the ark. Go tell Hollywood it's not wherever they found it in the movie. It's in glory. And the only way you're going to see that ark for the Christian today is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 
You're not going to see it any other way. I don't think Nazis are going to hold it. God has told us that ark is not on the earth. In verse 18, 2 Kings 25. Where is everything else? Where's the table? Where's the showbread? Where's the, the plates? Where's the where's the candle? It's already been taken away. The first captivity will be read in 24. And the captain of the guard took Shariah, the chief priest. Look at that. We know the name of the high priest at the captivity. And Zephaniah, the second priest. And the three keepers of the door. You call them deacons. Today they call them security personnel. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't resist that one. You know how you know they're not security personnel? Because the army that came in and took them. They didn't fight. They didn't do nothing. They didn't pull out their guns. They said, okay, here, let's go. Probably too weak to fight. Remember, it's been a famine. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war. He would be a commander. And five men of them that were in the king's presence. Friends, security, friend, uh, yeah, I already said friend. Which were found in the city in the principal scribe of the host. This, this is the guy that records things. This is the guy in charge of the books. Which mustered the people of the land. So some kind of... Uh, Toll, some kind of census guy. Three score men of the people of the land that were found in the city. And Neber Zadan, captain of the guard, took these and brought them to King ba brought them to the king of ba to the king of Babylon to Ribla. And the king of Babylon smoked them, slew them in Ribla in the land of Hamath. We read that in Jeremiah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we read that in Jeremiah. So Judah was carried away out of the, their land. There's a the captivity. I'll give you some dates and information in a moment. And as for the people that remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Gedaliah, the son of Hagalikim, the son of Shaphar, ruler. And you will learn about that story in Jeremiah. And there's a murder. <laughs> Ishmael will murder the, the captain set by Babylon. And when the captains of the armies, they, their men, heard the king of Babylon had made Gedidiah governor. You'll find that in Jeremiah, the story. So what happens is Judah is carried away. King, everybody associated with the king, many of the people, some are left. The ones that are left, the poor land, the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar sets up a Babylonian government. And the man that's in charge of the governor is Galilee, Babylonian. There came to Galilee to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and Jehanan, the son of Kyria, and Sariah, the son of Tenhumphlet. Some of these names are hard. The Nethopathite. And Jasaniah, the son of a Machathite, they and their men, and they're going to be trouble in Jeremiah. And Gadai sware to them and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be the servants of the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, it shall be well with you. Okay, stay here in the land. Owe your allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar. There'll be no troubles, no problem. And God will tell Jeremiah, and God will tell Ezekiel. That's exactly what you guys are to do. But guess what? The Jews never do what God tells them to do. Neither do man, for all have sinned come short of the glory of God. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Ishmael, of the seed royal, so he's got blue blood, came and ten men with him, and smoke at Eli that he died. And the Jews of the Chaldees that were with him at Mizpah, so they start killing Babylonians. And they steal Jeremiah and they steal Baruch. And they, they head down to Egypt. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies, rose, came to Egypt, 
Jeremiah 43, verses 4 through 7. We want to, Jeremiah 43, 4 through 7. For they were afraid of the Chaldeans. Why were they afraid of the Chaldeans? Because you just killed their, their government. Where Jeremiah preached, Ezekiel preached, where God told him, and this man that's put in the governor of Gedali said, listen, if you just obey the, the Babylonian government, we'll give you a form of peace. And they killed him. And it came to pass in the 730th year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the 12th month on the 7th and 20th day of the month, that evil Mordech, and I'll give you information about him in a minute, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoiakim. Now remember, we read about him last chapter. He hasn't, he hasn't died. The first captivity, he's taken to Babylon. He's put in jail. We're up to Zedekiah. Zedekiah has been killed. Now, Zedekiah has had his eyes put out. He's been put in prison. His sons were killed. Jehoiakim is, is in Babylon, king of Judah, out of the prison. And he spake kindly to him and set his throne above the thrones of the kings that were in Babylon. And he changed his prison garment. He did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance, that's the only time that word shows up, allowance, was a continual allowance given him of the king a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. So alliance in the Bible is... You get it every day. So let's look at the kings real quick of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, the man that we read about is Nebuchadnezzar II. He's 605 to 562 BC. After him is evil Mordech, which we just read, verse 27. He's 562 to 560 BC. Next on to him is Nergus. Harezer, 560 to 556 B.C. He murders evil Mordech. He's a son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar II. Then there's Laish Mordach, 556 B.C. He's killed because they didn't think he was, he was, he was ruler enough. <laughs> That's one way to, uh, uh, what's that called when you try to get rid of the President of the United States? Uh, what's that? Impeach. Just kill him. Then you have Nebrad, Nebrad, 556 to 539, and he left his son as cold rain when he would not be in Babylon, Belshazzar. Again, you'll say Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, that could be a grandson. So there's the one, two, three, four, five, six last kings of Babylon that we read about. Now, in 931, oh, by the way, we just finished 338 chapters of 1,189 chapters of the Bible. In 931 B.C., Jeroboam and Rehoboam divide the nation from north, to no, north and south. 931 B.C. And these dates can be off, give or take. Um... I read my notes here. In 722 B.C., Israel, the ten tribes, is Syrian captivity. In 722 B.C., that's when Israel north goes into captivity. 606, Babylon, for the first time, comes to Jerusalem. 597, Babylon comes the second time. And 586 is the, what we just read in our chapter 25. That's when Israel goes finally and all Judah goes into captivity. And he'll be in Babylon for 70 years. So, Second Kings 25 defies evolution. They did not get better and better and better and better and great. Second Kings 25 shows the wages of sin is death. God saw it, he watched it, he warned them, he tried to stop them. In, in Exodus 25, he got one of the greatest preachers, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah had only, you can look at one convert, maybe two. 
And friend and brethren, you need to realize America is in the same point as 2 Kings 24 and 25. Not many are listening to the gospel, and the sins are just rapid. And with that comes a fall.